I am 25 years old. Hell yeah. Here's some birthday stuff. So, let's start with the movies first, I suppose. This one's The Shining by Stanley Kubrick. It uh, might be my favorite Stanley Kubrick film now. I know I was obsessed with Chocolate Clockwork Orange at one point, but this movie's just so deep, man. There's really nothing like it. It's so pretty. It's so scary. It's so nice to look at, but it's also so scary to look at. It's a really good movie. <clears throat> Anyways, you might be wondering why I got another copy of Love Exposure. It's because the other one is region locked. This one's not. Um, if you haven't heard of Love Exposure, it's a four-hour film, but it's super entertaining. It's a really, really great movie. It's just an incredible movie. All the different sorts of genres are made throughout it. It's a romance, it's an action, it's, uh, it's almost like a really, really weird batshit anime, but in live action form. It's, it's really good. Um, this one's The Human Condition, a movie by Mizaki Kobayashi, Japanese director from the 50s. I also have his movie Harakiri, which I did not unbox, but I will, but I prefer Harakiri of another not related movies of the same director, though, but this is... It's an eight hour long film total. It's made into three different parts. The third film is probably my favorite in it. Um, but it's a really good movie. It's not a samurai movie like most of his films. Instead, it's a war movie. It's a war movie. Um, <coughs> okay. Oh, fuck. Ah! Shit. Damn. Damn, son. Okay. Fuck. Alright. Yeah, we're good. It didn't, it fell over on a, a separate joint, I guess, just so that you know. Anyways, uh, it's inside the book. Let's put these back. Alright. Make sure this is okay. It didn't fall. It didn't fall over on the part where I asked the reason for this. So we're good. Oh, and also the booklet. I forgot. It's the booklet. Pretty cool. There it is. It's booklet. Pretty cool stuff. Criterion Collection is really, really cool film company. They have some really great packaging. They clearly love films, and they know a lot about films. Um, this is also Criterion Collection. This is Grand Budapest Hotel. Wes Anderson is my favorite film he did. It's a really, really great movie. It's from 2014. One of my favorite movies of the 2010s as well. Inside of it's just blue. It's a really, really pretty film to look at too. But it's very funny as well. It's a really, really good movie. One of my favorites. So. Film inside. And it comes with all this stuff. This might be one of the coolest Criterion Collection stuff I got, I would probably say. This is a poster. It comes with this little double sided poster. It's pretty epic, I have to say. Probably the more blue side. I like that side more in first one. That's just me though. Um, and also, I had had this thing. Told all well about it. Um, is this? Come with books, which is pretty epic. I 
This guy, Wes Anderson, he definitely knows how to make scenes look good and look pretty. He definitely does. He's an artist on that aspect, on a lot of other things. <clears throat> I got done eating. That's why my voice kind of sounds kind of weird when I drink a soda. My voice may sound kind of weird, but that's it for a Grand Budapest Hotel. So put this stuff away. So, this one is Francis the Mute by Mars Volta and a progressive rock band from Texas. Um, it's a side project, but I think it's more well known than At the Drive In. So, I don't know what you'd say, but it's formed by a lot of the members of At the Drive In. But I prefer At the Drive In, but this is a really great album. It's much more experimental than De Laos and the Comitorium, which is generally considered to be their best, and it's um, much more popular than this, but I prefer this one over it. I really love the song Cassandra Gemini. It's definitely my favorite song they did, in my opinion. It's a very experimental progressive rock album with a lot of diverse sounds, with like rat Latin rock, has some jazz elements, has some electronic stuff and some industrial stuff in here. Really, really cool album. This one is twin fantasy face to face it's the it's also as the original 2011 recording of it in here too they're a car seat address an indie rock band from um virginia <laughs> and uh this is um i really really love the re-recording of it i think it's much better than the original one i think the original one's good but i think the re-recording blows it out of the water um so basically he um the vocalist made an album called um Twin Fantasy back in 2011, I think when he was a teenager, and um, it was a concept album, and uh, it was it was just him in the group at the moment, the Will Toledo, um, just him in the group at the moment. And this is just the drawing he did at the time, and he made it, and um, it obviously didn't have the best sound quality, so you could call it lo-fi indie, you could probably call it, but in 2018 he remade the album now that he has a group. And he made their best album by far, in my eyes. Like, the re-recording is just so, so good. It's so much better than the original one. The original one, I'd probably give, like, an 8. The re-recording, I'd probably give somewhere a very high 9. Probably, if I were to give a score. Alright. Last CD. This one is I'm In Your Mind, Buzz, by King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. This is probably my second favorite album they did after Non and Gone Infinity. And um, their new album's really good too, but I think I, <clears throat> their new album's probably my probably my third or fourth favorite, I'd probably say. Cool thing. I wouldn't really call it a poster. I'm definitely not going to hang it up, but it's cool. I wanted to get the vinyl, but the vinyl's very expensive. And this album kind of is, <clears throat> has a bit of a similar sound to Nonagon Infinity, and as you can see, it has a pretty similar cover to it as well. <clears throat> That's the CD. Alright. <clears throat> That's about it, guys. Thank you guys for watching. <clears throat>